Whether the public chooses to believe in the frightening growth of Satanism or not, the fact is that a highly organized network of Satanists are operating in America and Europe today. They seem to be respectable members of society and are integrated into all professions and walks of life. We go now to a special report from noted author Hal Lindsey, who is on location at a site known to be used for satanic rituals. We came out to a place in the hills east of Los Angeles to a location that has been identified in the past with ritual worship and we believe Satanism. Frequently this site has been uh, discovered with candles that had been used in ritual and you can look at some of the artifacts we found here today, upside down crosses that were put around, bones that uh, are scattered around here and uh, various satanic symbols but also something disturbing in the light of what we'll be talking about in the future. And that is the diaper of a very, very small baby. You know, I believe that this country is experiencing a pagan invasion, including a new upsurge of practice of witchcraft, the new age, and as we will talk about today, outright Satanism. Around the middle of the 1960s, there was a dramatic upsurge and satanic worship, beginning with Anton LaVey and his writing of the uh, Satanic Bible and the founding of the Church of Satan in San Francisco in 1966. I watched as this accelerated, not just in the West Coast, but around the country. When Charles Manson and his gang in 1969 committed the horrible, brutal crime at Sharon Tate's home, this was done in connection with all of the paraphernalia of Satan worship. This started a whole avalanche of satanic crimes. We've seen serial murders. We have watched as one after another has been brought to light. Many murders where uh, satanic symbols have been discovered, the pentagram, 666, and all sorts of things of this nature were done. But more distressing, we have found all over the country reports that there are animals that have been mutilated in a very skillful and specific style that shows that they were ritually offered as sacrifices. There are now confirmed cases where there have been girls that have been used as breeders and their infant children have been sacrificed to Satan. Halloween seems to be the high holy day for the Satanist and the occultist. Halloween is the time when all across the country in secret little places, in the dark, there will be little babies sacrificed to Satan. You don't believe it? I know it's hard to believe myself, but there has been such an acceleration of worship of Satan that we believe that these sorts of things are happening and we have evidence that they are. Satanism exists in this country as it exists elsewhere it is appallingly evil. It is about murder. It is about child abuse. It's about sexual abuse. It is no joke and must be taken seriously and must be dealt with. If they can ritually abuse children, if they can in any way uh, sexually abuse children, uh, anything to destroy a child's innocence or their trust or their, their wonder at the world, they will do it. The, the most tragic stories that I've ever heard are where a child has told people what's been happening and the adults have said, don't be stupid, that doesn't happen in this country, you're, you're, make, you're making up stories, you're lying. The problem we're coming across is that the higher officials in these public uh, organizations do not want to acknowledge that this is occurring. We need to lift that veil of misunderstanding and saying, hey, this is a crime to be dealt with. It's the crime of the 90s. It's not going away. Satanists want to recruit. We know that it's been going on for many years. This is not new. But their arrogance and their outwardness about the way they recruit is becoming unbelievable. Sometimes they'll simply uh, suck them in through the local high schools, uh, sex and drug parties. We have an epidemic of young people participating in some strata of Satanism. 
Now, that doesn't mean that they're all out sacrificing human beings, but they may very well be doing the uh, rituals that involve mutilation of animals. One fire department individual told me all of the woods around our area have these types of rituals going on. It is believed that if you, if you kill an animal, that that exerts a tremendous amount of energy that the people there can sort of vampirize on. And so animals would be slain. Uh, and this is especially true on the high holidays like Beltane and Samhain, Halloween and May Eve. There's something about sacrifice. If you do it once, you want to do it all the time. Once, you, once you've actually passed the barrier of sacrificing an animal, you get this sort of bloodlust where you, have, you really want to do it. And I, I really wanted to do it. This lady in a black robe came forward with this little baby. And at first I didn't realize it was a, a, a real baby. And she just laid it on the altar. It was breathing, but it wasn't crying. And then the high priest just took the athami, or the ceremonial dagger, and just cut the baby's throat and caught the blood in a chalice. At that point, I, I was staggering, reeling. I thought I was just going to, to throw up. I just couldn't believe it. But by then, I was so scared that I just stood there. And then when I was led forward, I thought, this is it, it's your turn, they're going to kill you. Um, and I was lifted up onto the altar. Now, I, I at that time was still in white. It was part of a, um, a sacrifice known as the Sacrifice of the White Virgin. Um, and the same blood that had come from the baby was daubed all over my body. Then the high priest raped me. And I think at that moment, I, I was just, the fact I was still alive went through my mind. I thought, you're still alive. I then had to sign in blood a parchment stating that I would never, ever reveal what had happened in a coven. If I did, I would die. Are human beings being sacrificed? Yes, they are. There's a lot of things that I would look for to uh, make a determination on a ritualistic crime. It could be marks that are found at the scene. It may be things like a pentagram. It may be an upside down cross. It could be, again, the number 666. It could be a loss of blood in the body, uh, certain parts removed in a certain manner. They're victims. Some are targeted for specific reasons. One, because they wouldn't join. Two, because uh, they did join and they want to drop out. Some of their victims are themselves. They voluntarily do it. In many satanic groups, a mother will be asked to sacrifice her own child to Satan, and she may even, in fact, be ritually impregnated to do that. She may even specifically have, have been impregnated, and then when the child is born, they never register the child as being born, and they kill it in a very horrible way. And sometimes the mother herself is actually asked to do it. Some of you may not even believe what you've just seen. You may believe that this is just something that's aberrational and, and that uh, it just doesn't reach the mainstream of America. But just think about some of the headlines we've had recently. The case in Metamoros where a group in Mexico were, were practicing human sacrifice, where they kidnapped and actually sacrificed several innocent young people. And think about the Night Stalker case here in Los Angeles with Ramirez uh, brazenly flashing the satanic symbol and uh, saying hail Satan and sh holding up his palm with a pentagram in it. And yet Ramirez was convicted of some of the most brutal crimes that we've ever seen in this civilized society. One case where he caused the woman to say hail Satan while he was raping and sodomizing her alongside of her husband whom he had already murdered. These are things that were done as a result, I believe, of getting involved in Satanism. The real Satanists, the hardcore Satanists, are involved in criminal activity, and for that reason they are going to try and look as normal as possible. 
the better to be able to deceive you. There are doctors, there are lawyers, there are teachers, there are oftentimes people who are in positions of great influence over small children. In a recent letter to syndicated advice columnists and landers, a concerned parent wrote of a fourth grade teacher who had asked her students to write a short essay on what they would most like to do to celebrate Halloween. Eighty percent of her nine-year-olds expressed the wish to kill somebody. It is easy to see how Halloween's ambiance can promote an unhealthy desire for violence. All of today's seemingly innocent Halloween customs and symbols have their origins in the ancient Celtic Day of the Dead. For example, the practice of trick-or-treat is from Celtic tradition, where people gave food in return for blessings from spirits of the dead. Failure to supply treats would result in demonic retaliation. Jack-o'-lanterns grew out of the Celtic tradition of carving the faces of demonic spirits on turnips and later on pumpkins. The World Book Encyclopedia says the apparently harmless lighted pumpkin face of the jack-o'-lantern is actually an ancient symbol of a damned soul. Candlelit pumpkins or skulls at a home signified that the occupants were sympathetic to Satan and would therefore receive mercy by spirits and trick-or-treaters on their Halloween rounds. Perhaps the most sickening of all Druidic New Year practices were the human sacrifices which occurred at midnight. Adults and children alike would be thrown into huge fires while the celebrants danced around them in demonic fits of abandon. By morning's light, only ashes and bones would remain. These were called bone fires, which is where we get the tradition of bonfires today. The Druids believed that black cats were reincarnations of the evil dead and were possessed with supernatural power and knowledge. Bobbing for apples was part of the Druidic New Year sexual divination ceremony of fertility. The broomstick and witch's hats were originally considered phallic symbols. When used in the rituals of witchcraft, these objects supposedly transform the sexual energy released during orgasm into psychic energy. By understanding the pagan origins of Halloween, we can no longer claim ignorance. As parents, we are called to a sense of responsibility and must decide whether to allow our children to participate in occultic celebrations which glorify the powers of darkness. The Pagan Invasion is an explosive new 13-part video series providing a thorough behind-the-scenes examination of today's New Age movement and neo-pagan revival. Each superbly produced volume features rare footage from around the world along with expert analysis by noted Christian leaders and authors. For more information, contact your local Christian bookstore or call 1-800-828-2290. California residents call one 800 6